Link stepped off the cold streets in New York City and made our way to the Barbados Consulate to finally sit down with Barbadian author Glenville Lovell, where he was having a showcase and reading of his novel of short stories, Going Home in Chains. Glenville took some time out to read an excerpt from one of the stories, Licks Like Peas, and judging from the audience's reactions, this one story had them wrapped and at times in stitches. It was funny sultry, tantalizing, and uniquely Barbadian. We were all in for the wild ride. I confess that I was a novice to Glenville's writings, but after the reading on Friday, I was sold. His distinct attention to detail and intricate character sketches and development would take any reader right back to the village, the gap, the scene, whether far from our home or right back on the island. The stories are vivid. Going Home in Chains is not Glenville's only novel. He also has a detective series and another novel titled Fire in the Canes. Glenville, a former dancer who got the bug to write back in 1985, starting first with plays, then going into novels somewhere around 1994, hails from Parishland Christ Church. He's been acclaimed by the New York Times Book Review and the Washington Post, and it's been said he has a sharp eye for the extraordinary tropical landscape and the eccentricities of his characters. Glenville says about himself that he grew up surrounded by sugarcane shadows and word magicians with storytelling all around him in kitchens at night on the flamboyant trees in rum shops. He developed a passion for stories which unfolded with the mystery of dreams. He's published four novels and his short stories can be found in several anthologies, including Queen's Noir and Best African American Fiction 2010. He has two prize-winning plays, The Debating Society and Lovers. So here it is, Lynx presents to you, Glenville Lovell. This is Lynx, keeping you connected. I grew up in Parchland um, in Christchurch, which is about two miles below the airport. It's a rural, it was a rural village when I grew up, you know, sugar canes uh, all over and few houses. So um, I grew up in a very um, sort of an idyllic situation. It was, it was a beautiful life, you know, you didn't have any worries other than hearing, you know, crazy stories about, about the heart man who coming to grab you. You know, life was beautiful. I always, on reflection, I have come to the conclusion that this is something that I was being prepared for all my life. From the time I was maybe, I don't know, five or six. Because I, I always had a deep, uh, an, an interest in how my grandmother and my mother and, and those storytellers of my youth, how they manage to keep you enthralled, keep you wanting to to hear what's going to happen next. And I I realized it was it was the way they told the story. I mean I didn't know it then at the time of course, but I knew that there was something about storytelling that I that I loved. And I actually started tried to write when I was like nine. I tried writing uh, a, a novel but you know, I, I I only got like two pages. But I had I always I had the personality that lends itself well to to writing because I used to go off into the woods and and sit and ruminate and meditate on just life. And this is at the age of ten and eleven, not knowing why I was doing these things. So I've always felt like this was something that was just you know I was just born to do this. Um, so finally when I started writing poems at like the age of 16 or 17, it just all felt so natural. I've been writing now for, uh, since like uh, 1985 or so, so it's been a long time. I started writing plays and then I switched to novels around 1994. But before that I wrote a lot of plays that I produced in Barbados. Some of my plays have been 
produced in Guyana and, um, and, and other parts of the Caribbean. Some of them have been produced here. But I, I, I sort of switched, not switched full time, but I made my foray into novels around 1995. And so I, I sort of alternate between novels and playwriting. Plays like um, When the Eagle Screams, um, Silver Web, Debating Society, those are some of the plays that I've, I've, I've done. Right after she's 17th birthday, that Sonia meet Adolphus <laughs> Carter. Or pigeon, as most people is calling, a tall, broad-backed man who did about 10 years older than she. Now, Pigeon had just moved into Pilgrim Road to live in a house that he uncle had gone away and left him. If any of you know Pilgrim Road, this uncle that lived right below the mini mark, which was across the street from the bus stop. At the very same bus stop, if you remember, where Arlene pung this strip off all of Diane Payne's clothes after some malicious body went and tell Arlene that Diane was pregnant for Arlene's boyfriend. <laughs> I think storytelling is, is a natural part of growing up in the Caribbean. I mean, um, at least certainly at the time when I grew up because we didn't have all of the, the things to distract us that, that the kids have now. So we occupied ourselves, you know, with listening to, to stories. And, and there's always some character in, in the village in the neighborhood who inspired storytelling. You, you could always find groups of people gathered somewhere and, every, and somebody's either telling jokes or telling stories. Plus, there's, there's so much flavor and character in, in, in the villages that it's right for storytelling. But I think storytelling can happen anywhere because it's really, storytelling is about characters. And characters are part of the natural development of any society. So I think you can, you can tell stories anywhere. I mean, you tell the stories of your youth, but if you travel, you will also acquire more stories. And I'm always looking, you know, for, for stories. So. Um, while Caribbean life certainly lends itself to, to characters and to storytelling, I don't think it's especially you know, limited to that, to that life. Now, Pigeon is one of these bodybuilding fellows, you see? And he loves showing off. So he out there bareback in shorts and he dark, dark. So the muscles glistening in the sun. He stopped Sonia with a smile on his smooth face, with his teeth shining like rim water on a crackle back. You should expect exciting storytelling. You should expect characters that are vivid, characters that will grab you. You will expect um, characters that have depth. You, would ex you should expect humor, and of course, and the way he's smiling now started to do something to she, like they started to hypnotize she. <laughs> but you know, you ain't too bad looking though, you know. <laughs> and he got nice eyes too. And he's so vague and strong, like he could like pull up a house on their shoulders. She ain't even realized now that pigeon holding she hands. She needs start to buckle and if she didn't pull up, she would have collapsed to the floor. I have I have some erotic stories that, that this this doesn't really touch erotica in the way that I, I do with my other stories. I have some erotica stories that will um, will make some make some stuff happen. But this doesn't this, I don't think anything in here should do that. There's some, you know, a little bit of uh, erotic material in a couple of the stories, but nothing too too hardcore. So kids can read it. It's PG. But I don't have any published. I only have one erotica story published. It was published in a collection called um, uh, what was it called? Uh, Wanderlust. It was uh, came out a couple of years ago. I will at some point do a collection of erotica, but I'm still collecting the stories. But they're pretty hot. 
You should hear some of the excuses she coming up with to sneak off the pigeon house. Here she. Ma, all the ice cream gone. I want, I want Santa to cool me off. I hot. I guess for the mini mar get some ice cream. But, girl, I just buy ice cream today. You want to see? I didn't like that kind, man. That kind too soft. <laughs> I, I go I go to I go home fairly frequently. I was just there earlier this year, and um, I'm going to be going back pretty soon. So I travel back and forth frequently. I have a lot of Barbadian friends that I talk to on a regular basis. Is it a challenge to maintain your vision of authenticity, even though you're different for so long? No, you know, um, I you know I marvel when I hear people talking about. You know, the can remember how to talk with the page and I know you remember it. It's, it's, it's part of you. You you forget who he is. I mean that's the only way you can forget. Forget amnesia or saying. <laughs> Bajan dialect, um I I go with the story, the way the story comes to me. If it feels like a story that lends itself well to the dialect, then I will go with it. I I will probably try to write a few more because I know they're, they're good to read, you know, and, and they're fun to read. So I, I think I will try to develop more stories in that, in that vein. Every chance she get, she calling Barbados. And it's very sweet talk she get from Beijing, you know, who reading love poems <laughs> you find in the book. <laughs> and telling she that if she don't come back, he might just walk in the sea and don't look back. <laughs> Girl, as soon as you come back here, we can get married at Sandy Lane, you know. Do you put yourself in there? Is there any, is there any way that that tends to happen? Uh, yeah, I, of course. I mean, any, any writer will tell you that no matter what story they're, they're telling, what, unless they're writing somebody's biography, part of you has to go into the story. Because really what's happening when you create, well, you're, 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 you're an artist, you, want, you will understand. What happens when you're creating is that you are really finding different sources to then combine um, within you and sort of centralize uh, a, cert a part of your personality that you, you may not have tested before. So any, even when you situate a, a character that's external to you, even if it's some, because writers will base characters on all kinds of people, people they meet, people they see on the train, even people that they read about. But when you bring that character into you, what happens is it, it finds a part of you that you have not, you know, identified before, and it, and it brings that part out. So you basically just, you know, I think most of, uh, most of the time, showing other aspects of yourself through other, through other characters. So I, I think it's, you always tend to, um, I mean, it's not always obvious where it is. It's sort of like a, um, you know, subconscious thing. You know, you're not always, you're not consciously doing it. But I think that that's what happens in the creative process that allows you to, to tell the story. My, my work is character-based. I, I, I develop a story based on how the character is beginning to come to me. Um, I and then I, I I work the plot in, but the character has got to um, be exciting to me. The character has got to be one that keeps me guessing, keeps me thinking, keeps me wanting to find out more. Um, I I like to immerse myself in a character to try to understand where the character is coming from, what the character wants, their motivations. That's what makes writing exciting for me trying to because uh, like I said earlier uh, developing a character is sort of a way of also developing an understanding of yourself so the characters um, are crucial to any good story characters come all I don't need to be living any I can be living on the moon and characters will come my mind and my my whole um, life is about searching for characters. I can look at you and I start seeing characters. I walk down the street and I see characters. I don't have to be living in Barbados to see. I have enough characters stored up in me from Barbados to write ten, ten books. So, characters are always with me. All she's doing now is putting on weight. And she can't get Adolphus to set a date for this wedding. He 
giving Sina all kinds of excuse. He looking to buy a house first. But how it would look if they get married and he still live in the uncle house. He got to pay off the car note first. How it can look if he got big, big wedding at Sandy Lane and still owing for a car. A year passed and still no date for this wedding. And all this easy living got he getting too plump for he like him. Clothes can't fit. And the more weight he putting on, the bigger the smile on Pigeon face. Every day he telling she how good she looking. But she don't like how everything and she body bouncing like she in a minibus on a rough road. <laughs> My books are all available on Amazon.com. Um, so you just need to just go on Amazon and do a search for Glenn Vilovel and you should see all five of my books, um, the four novels and the, and, the three, and the collection of stories. Um, so it's pretty easy to get. Getting published though is not that easy. Um, and especially now the way things have gone in the publishing industry, consolidation, you know, publishers don't really want to publish anything risky anymore. So it's for any writer who's trying to get published out there, I mean you it's a tough it's a tough sled to to, 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 to travel on, but if you have the passion you just keep doing it. Passion. Um, I have a, 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 a very deep passion for storytelling and I'm lucky that I write in different genres. I write short stories. I even write erotic short stories for anybody who wants to, you know. <laughs> I, write, I write plays and I write novels. So I write across, so it's easy for me to maintain a certain freshness um, because I can jump, you know, from one genre to the next. I like to kind of go from uh, a play to, to fiction. So. Uh, so that you know, I, I, I sort of have a different energy going going in, um, you know, to the creative process. But she began to realize that pigeon sweet talk is like so bubbles. As soon as they hit the ear, <laughs> she realizing that pigeon in too eager to relinquish this bachelorhood and live with wasn't her idea of marriage. She didn't care if it was accepted in Barbados or not. The, the detective series is uh, with a detective called Blades Over Street. There's um, um, the first novel is Too Beautiful to Die. The next novel in that series is called Love and Death in Brooklyn. And there are two um, literary fiction novels. Um, Fire in the Canes and Song of Night. Those are my four novels and the collection of stories called Going Home in Chains. And just as Glenville's characters melt out into the city streets and sometimes they even find their way back home, so too do we. This is Lynx, right back out into the same city streets, ever looking for those interesting stories and of course, keeping you connected. Hi, I'm Merle and I've been linked. So hey, this is the cast of Pam Palam. This is Lottie. I'm Brett. Janice. Yolanda. And, and we've, we've been, been linked. linked. <laughs>